Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. So we're checking on Norma, I mean on Brenda here. But what I'm noticing is she is really bagged up. What do you think, Brenda? So we've moved um, Brenda to the barn because even though she's still 10 days from her due date, um, there's a couple things that have changed in the last 12 hours. And one of those things is that I've seen the development of all of these veins here. This has filled in and her teats are filled in. They're not wrinkly anymore. They're all filled in with milk. And then, her pins have softened up right there. This usually f feels like a muscle or, or meat right here, um, but this is to the point of feeling like jello. And then she's all swollen back here and she's been having um, discharge here. You can see the discharge on her tail. So she's been having discharge all day. So we'll see. This will be Brenda's first time calving on our farm. So we'll see if um, it is within the next 48 hours or if it's within the next three days. But we'll keep her in the barn overnight and if nothing happens overnight, I'll let her out in the morning um, where I can watch her. But I can feel the calf. And she'll be happy in here with the chickens and turkeys for company overnight. Is that right, Brenda? Good night, calf. So at 4.30 a.m. I heard a rooster crow and I thought, well, that's unusual. Um, it's too early for the rooster to crow. There must be a disturbance in the barn. So I got up and sure enough, I found a calf on the ground and we at that time suspected that it was a couple hours old. Mom is doing well and her instincts tell her to clean the calf. Part of this is because she likes the taste of the amniotic fluid and so this causes her to lick the calf and clean it up. And all this stimulation from the licking also stimulates the calf's um, circulatory system and gets its blood flowing to every part of its body. So the first thing I'm going to offer Brenda is some warm molasses water. And you can purchase um, food grade molasses by the gallon from most animal supply stores. Um, but because I wasn't headed to our animal supply store, I just bought some blackstrap molasses from our grocery store. And you wanna add about four cups of molasses to five gallons of warm water. So I added very hot tap water to my molasses and I dissolved it. And then when I got to the barn, I added some cold water and offered it to Brenda.
So when Brenda didn't show any interest, I decided to add some more warm water to it because I know from experience that they like the molasses water best when it's very warm and not cold. And the reason we offer them molasses water is because there's a lot of minerals um, like iron in molasses and that helps them replenish minerals and iron and things like that that they lost during birth and it also brings the cow's blood sugar back up so that she feels better and um, she will eat better after this and it'll just get her whole system recovering faster and sure enough after I made the molasses water warm um, Brenda drank it all down <coughs> So the calf starts practicing its standing. It's very wobbly at first, but it does not give up and keeps trying over and over. It'll try to stand and then it'll rest for a while and then it'll try to stand again. So when the calf gets up, I notice that it's a heifer, which means it's a girl. And Brenda starts cleaning the calves behind, and this will stimulate the calf to urinate and move its bowels. And in some animals, like cats and dogs, they actually cannot eliminate without the mom's stimulation and will die um, without their mother stimulating that. Calves do not have that problem. Um, they can eliminate without the mom's stimulation. Um, but Brenda will just help keep the calf clean this way. So I decide to bring Brenda some hay to snack on and help her um, keep her energy up. So the big round bales of hay that we offer our cows as free choice where they can eat whenever they want is mostly grass hay with some alfalfa mixed in. Um, but alfalfa adds the protein that they need. So we use this alpha hay, which is like a fermented haylage, and give them some of that every day. It just smells so good. And I'm going to put the link in the description where you can go to Alpha Hay's website and find a supplier close to your area. So at this time, the calf has gotten much better on its own two feet and is starting to think about having its first meal.
So when I've got mom and baby all settled, um, I'm going to head to the house and have a cup of coffee and read my Bible until it's time to get the children out of bed to help me with the milking and the rest of the animal chores before school. So we also have a mama pig that's due with piglets any day now. So I'm gonna take a walk down to the pig pen and see if Poppy had her piglets. But it doesn't look like we have piglets this morning. So with the boys' help, we are going to move Brenda over in the milking stall. And we're also going to milk some colostrum and give it to the calf. Um, we wean the calves, which means we separate them from their mother um, within the first 6 to 12 hours after birth. Because calves have to be weaned eventually and we've just found it easier. It works better for our homestead if we do that sooner rather than later, say three month old. So one of the problems that we've had with allowing the calf to nurse from the mom is the mom's instincts tell her to hold back her milk for the calf and not give it to the humans. And since her body produces way more milk than the calf can possibly drink, um, we get mastitis because that milk stays in there and gets infected. And then the other, uh, other reason is that when the calves get bigger, their teeth are bigger and they tear up the mom's teeth so bad that they're cracked and bleeding. And then the mom does not um, like for us to milk because it hurts her teeth because they're so cut up from the calves. So for those multiple reasons is why we separate the calf earlier. So colostrum is the very first milk that mom gives and it is full of antibodies and just lots and lots of goodness that is essential to the survival of almost every mammal um, on this planet. So the calf takes to the bottle like a champ and drinks about one and a half pints of colostrum. At this point, I'm not too worried about how much it's drinking because I'm suspicious that it already had a drink. Um, in the couple hours that I left them alone in the barn, I'm suspicious that it already drank from mom a little bit. So we're not too worried about the amount that she's taking right now. So I'm going to get um, Brenda all settled in for the day, going to give her plenty of hay to eat and uh, at this point we're not offering her um, too much grain yet, um, but she will start to get a little bit of corn in a few days when her um, colostrum is all gone and milk comes in. And we're also going to make sure the calf has a nice dry and clean bed. Um, the temperatures are forecasted to be about 50 degrees today, so that's a perfect temperature for calves. All right, kids are home from school. We are going out for afternoon feeding. Hey, Kendrick, I forgot, I need the bottle. Oh, where? Um, in the laundry room. No, I brought it in a wash. We're going out for the afternoon feeding. Um, normally I would have fed the calf shortly after lunch, um, but I was not at home. So I've got some more um, molasses water for Brenda and I might let her out in the pasture a little bit if she wants to. And we're gonna feed the calf some more colostrum. So Sunny is up. We decided to name her Sunny because she was born on solar eclipse day. 
and although we do not know for certain that she was born on solar before midnight um we are going to say that she was born before midnight and name her sunny brenda is up sunshine sunshine <laughs> and her nose is warm her ears are warm um so that's a good sign that she is not suffering or not beginning with milk fever i remember when tom and jerry was this little right and they were fucking you kind of yeah. all right i'm gonna get brenda some more molasses water So for those first two to four days while we are, you know, getting colostrum from the mom, we like to give the calf more frequent and smaller meals um, in a day rather than just two large meals. So we'll feed three times a day and do as much as the calf will take or, you know, depending on the size of your calf. If your calf is bigger, it's definitely going to drink more. So those first couple bottles can be a bit of a challenge, but with some practice, both you and the calf will get better at it. Um, one of the tips is make sure that the hole in the end of the nipple is big enough and that the air return hole is also big enough. Because if your air return hole is not big enough, um, it's going to be a really slow process to finish a couple pints of milk. So in those first 24 hours, mom is not going to want to leave the barn. She's going to want to stay within sight of her calf, um, but that's okay. We will take food to the mom as long as that's where she wants to stay. All we're looking for is that she's not stressed. So as long as she's resting and eating, um, we are not going to move her. We're just going to okay, bring her food in and let her eat right here in the barn where she can be next to her calf. So we're gonna clean up the stall a little bit for Brenda before we bring her back in. And you can hear by the way that she's mooing that she really wants to be back in here where she can see her calf. So we're gonna hurry up and bring her back in. Go around, yep. Okay, now close the door. Okay, close up, Harrison. Here, Brenda, I wanna show you your water. That's okay, I'll fix that then. 
not sure what's the hay. Yes. Although Brenda wasn't initially showing interest in her molasses water this afternoon, she did eventually drink it because when I came back to check on them, it was gone. So then we're gonna do one more feeding at 8 p.m. right before bedtime. We're gonna get that calf's tummy filled. And this time I am taking a little more than the calf, than I, what I think the calf will drink, just because Brenda seems to have a lot of colostrum and I wanna take some pressure off of her udder because it seems really full. So whatever the calf doesn't drink, we will just give to the pigs tonight um, we don't usually save the colostrum because we don't calve that often. So all together today, I've probably milked close to two gallons of colostrum from Brenda over, a, you know, over those three milkings. And the calf has drank about a gallon of that with three feedings. And we're just going to get everybody ready for the night by giving them fresh straw. So the most important things for us for those first 24 hours are get colostrum into the calf, small frequent meals rather than um, larger meals, and to get your mama up and eating and drinking. If um, she's eating well, her chances of getting milk fever, which is a calcium deficiency, um, is much less. So the best thing for mama is to get her up, get her drinking, and get her eating, and get colostrum into that baby. And like my grandma used to say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And that's what I'm saying here is this is the way that works best for us. Um, there's many different ways of calf sharing and owning a family milk cow. And your best bet is just to figure out what works for you. And you're going to make mistakes along the way, but that's how you decide what works for you. Um, traditional calf sharing where the calf nurses from the mom um, did not work for us. We suffered with mastitis and cut teats and the stress of weaning them after three months was much worse than this gradual, than this gradual um, weaning method where we just prevent them from forming such a strong bond. And then as soon as the calf is no longer drinking from the bottle, she can go out on the pasture with the big cows, with her mom, and there the mother um, teaches her all the things that mamas teach their babies. They, she teaches her proper herd etiquette and all of that. And we won't have to worry about the calf trying to suckle from her mom because she really has never known to nurse from her mom. So the next morning, um, the calf is now over 24 hours old and we have taken some more colostrum from Brenda and this time I will take as much as she will give me and then we will feed it to the calf and we'll let Brenda lick her calf. Um, what we're trying to prevent is the calf nursing from the mom. It's the only thing that we don't want right now. So after 24 hours, um, the calf has not nursed from Brenda. Um, Brenda is not going to feel this urgency to be right next to her calf. And what I'm looking for now is for her to be comfortable going out to the hay feeder and eating hay. If she were standing at the barn door mooing, um, I would let her back in and take the hay to her um, so she can rest in the barn another day. Um, but as of this morning, she's very comfortable eating out at the hay feeder knowing that her calf is in the barn. 
And the only time that Brenda was stressed um, in these last 24 hours is when we moved her outside of the barn to clean her stall. Um, and then we brought her back in as soon as we could. And the other way, when we tried weaning when the calf was three, four month old, um, they would stand at the gate and holler and moo um, for days. And then even after that, we couldn't put them back together because that four month old calf will not forget about suckling on its mom for the next six to eight months. And that just makes pasture logistics very complicated for a small homestead like us.